You've probably heard it said that we reap what we sow. Well, that's certainly spiritual law. And it holds true in every application of our life. So get ready for your harvest. Stay tuned as we prepare for an abundant harvest. That's up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Arkansas Alive. Prophet Kenneth Copeland prophesied the word of the Lord for 2019 was 2019 would be a year of abundant harvest. I know that many people, when they hear that, only hear dollar signs while abundant harvest certainly includes and applies to financial harvest. I want to take a little different path. I want to, if I may, proceed with the leading of the Holy Spirit where this prophecy for the coming year is concerned. And I want you to listen very carefully. 2019 the year of abundant harvest. Now, if you perhaps see this teaching uh, as a re-air in another year, the principle applies in any year as far as biblical, spiritual, scriptural law, seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. That's spiritual law. You can apply that anytime, anywhere, any year. But specifically for this coming year, God has spoken through the mouth of a prophet, said this next year is going to be a year of an abundant harvest. But here's what I, I feel in my spirit. I want to take a little different path because as I've meditated on this and asked the Lord to reveal this to me, he revealed it to me in terms of an abundant harvest of souls, of people coming into the kingdom. You can call it awakening. You can call it revival. Actually, revival is not for lost people. Revival is for Christian people, believers that need to be revived. Uh, an awakening applies more to lost people. But you're going to see in the scriptures as we start today that harvest refers to uh, the lost. Those that will come into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, the lost souls coming into the kingdom. Let's start in Matthew chapter 9 and let's begin reading with verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when they saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted or were tired and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, Underline that word, plenteous. You can also underline harvest and make reference to the fact that it's denoting souls. And notice that Jesus is preaching, it says, the gospel of the kingdom. Now, several months ago, the Lord spoke to me about the difference between the revelation of the kingdom and the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus is teaching, it says he's teaching and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom, God's word about the kingdom. He's preaching and teaching the good news about the kingdom. Who is he preaching to? Or if you want to be grammatically, <laughs> um, to whom is he preaching the gospel of the kingdom? to lost people, 
to people that don't know him as Messiah, as Savior, to people who don't know anything about the kingdom of God. So he's preaching the gospel. The gospel of the kingdom is the good news, the God's word. The revelation of the kingdom is how it works. I've spent most of my ministry life teaching the revelation of the kingdom, how it works. You can have what you say, sowing and reaping, calling things they're not as though they were. The, the lifestyle of living by faith in Christ Jesus. Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. The good news to the sick is you don't have to be sick anymore. The good news to the poor is you don't have to be poor anymore. The good news to the broke is you don't have to be broke anymore. It says he was moved with compassion when he saw the multitudes. They were ignorant of the gospel of the kingdom. And he had compassion on them. There's another scripture in Mark 1 where it says he had compassion on the leper. Compassion says, I feel what you feel. Sympathy says, I know how you feel. But compassion says, I feel what you feel. So inside Jesus, he had the same pain, the same ignorance, the same misunderstanding or no understanding as the people. He had compassion. He felt how they felt. So he is being led by compassion. It says he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. It, it, it didn't say they were sheep. It says they were like sheep. Then said he to his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. God called it his harvest, the harvest fields. We're going to read other scriptures that says they're white unto harvest. But notice the emphasis about the harvest. We're talking about abundant harvest this, this coming year, abundant harvest. Notice it says the harvest is plenteous. That means it's abundant. I believe we're going to see this. I believe we're going to see more people come into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven than we have ever seen before. And they're going to come in through different means, through different ways, different ministries. People are going to see healing, deliverance, financial prosperity, and they're going to be drawn to the source of all of this. Now, let's go over to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. And let's look at verses 1 and 2. Luke 10, 1 and 2. I'm just trying to establish uh, something as we uh, teach on the abundant harvest. Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others, 70 also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest truly is great. Again, he's talking about the harvest, and notice he underlines the word great, or I underline the word great. The harvest is great, which means it's abundant. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into his harvest. This is his harvest. And he's talking about people here. Now go over to John chapter 4, and let's look at verses 34 through 36. John 4, 34 through 36. Jesus said, My meat or my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So here Jesus is showing his submission to the Father and he is fulfilling the desire of the heart of the Father. The Bible plainly tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay, next verse, verse 35. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest? Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, look on the fields, 
for they are white already to harvest. The word white signifies a maturity, a readiness. Uh, when a farmer here in Arkansas plants a crop and in the fall, you can drive along the, the farmlands of Arkansas and northeast, southeast, and you can see uh, the cotton, the soybeans, the rice, the um, everything that we plant and grow here in abundance. When I was in the Navy in the early 60s, I served on two different ships, and one particular ship was a warship, the uh, USS Robert L. Wilson, the destroyer, and we were down in Cuba at, at uh, Guantanamo Bay shelling the islands, showing gunfire support. The Marines were dug in. I mean, half the Sixth Fleet was there to let Castro know. <laughs> Uh, you better behave yourself. Uh, and we would go back into the after part of the ship and it, it, underneath, down below decks, was the storage. It was the steerage after steering and it was also storage. And sometimes I would go back there to, to keep my watch in after steering, which is almost down to the water line. And if the ship's knocked out or the helm is destroyed, the quarter deck, whatever, then you can... Um, steer the ship from down below where the rudder is and the propellers. And I would have to walk across this plank because in the hull of the ship, the storage of the ship was all our supplies. And there were huge 50 pound bags of rice from Rice Growers Co-op, Stuttgart, Arkansas. I felt so at home. <laughs> made me homesick to see uh, all that rice from Rice Growers Co-op, Stuttgart, Arkansas. We had abundance of stores. We would pull into different ports. So the Navy was buying uh, our rice right here from Arkansas, Rice Growers Co-op. We had an abundance of stores. And you, you can drive along uh, the Arkansas farmland and you can see when the crops are ripe unto harvest. And we have an abundant harvest of all of our crops here in Arkansas and in the South where most of our uh, food source comes from. So uh, he here Jesus said, uh, look at the fields, they are white unto harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto eternal life that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. We're working together as a team. One sows, another waters, another reaps. But all are involved in the harvest. And herein is that saying, true, one soweth and another reapeth. Now, let's read... Um, John chapter 10 and verse 10. This is where Jesus told his disciples in the last part of the verse, I am come that they might have life, Zoe, and that they might have it more abundantly. Now here's the abundant harvest, more abundantly, abundant harvest. Let's define the word abundant. Superabundant in quantity, superior in quality, excessive, exceeding abundantly above. That's what an abundant harvest is. It's superabundant, excessive, over the norm, superior in quality exceeding abundantly above. Go over to Ephesians, and let's look at chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians 3, 20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, I've got a circle around this word power, and in the... In the marginal reference, uh, I've written love 
because he's talking about love in the previous verses. He said that we being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what's the breadth, length, and depth, and height of love, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power of love that works in us. What moved Jesus toward the leper? What moved Jesus toward the multitudes that were weary and tired, compassion, love. Now, folks, I, I, you know I believe and teach and live in the understanding of the Bible that it's, a, it's God's will that all would prosper and be in health. You know we believe in prospering. We, we, don't, we don't take a vow of poverty we believe in prosperity. We believe that God wants us to prosper. But you also know that we believe and teach that the reason for the prosperity, Deuteronomy 8, 18 and 19, is so God can solidify and, and fulfill His covenant in the earth. It behooves us to prosper to glorify God. It behooves us to prosper so we can do the work of the kingdom. But again, I say I'm taking this abundant harvest in a little different direction because I want us to see the bigger picture, which I believe the Holy Spirit is saying that this abundant harvest is referring to the harvest of souls coming into the kingdom of God. And yet we as believers, as the church, have to have the same love the same compassion for the multitudes that Jesus had. We're his body in the earth. The body of Christ, the church, the called out ones, are the body of Christ in the earth. And we have to have the same attributes, the same compassion, the same love for these lost souls as Jesus did. So therefore, when you hear that word abundant harvest, I am advocating that we include or emphasize the harvest of souls, not just dollar signs. It's going to take dollars to bring in the harvest. If you don't, if you don't believe that, then while you're driving through South Arkansas or Northeast Arkansas, where most of the farming is done, uh, you go take a look at all the tractor companies and the combines and you, you go look at how much those things cost. You look at what it takes to harvest and bring in those crops. You go look at all the, uh, the uh, uh, soybean mills and the cottonseed mills and you go look at everything that it takes to bring that harvest from the field to your table. It's a massive expense. I don't remember. My friend Charles Capps used to tell me because he farmed many acres down in England, Arkansas. But I think, you know, to get one of those combines or all the equipment they had, it was hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And most farmers would have to buy those things on credit. And it was based on their, they make their crop, they pay their bills. They don't make a crop. Hopefully the bank would roll it over for another year. It takes a massive amount of money and equipment to bring in a harvest. You know, if you look at this thing in the big picture, that's what VTN is all about. VTN is a vehicle of God that God has provided for us to bring the harvest into the fold in the state of Arkansas, surrounding states, Missouri, Tennessee, Mississippi, and now through live stream around the world. So VTN is one of those combine instruments. This is a harvesting vehicle. We are harvesting the souls of the kingdom. We're teaching them the revelation of the kingdom and we're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And it takes millions of dollars to operate this equipment. And, you know, in 2019, VTN entered into its 30th year of consecutive broadcasting. Think of it. 
I think back to the parable of the sower, 30, 60, and 100 fold. We're at 30 fold. 2019 marks the 30th consecutive year of broadcasting for VTN. I don't even know off the top of my head the millions of dollars that it has cost us to do this. But through our partners, those that are working with us, those that are laborers in the field with us, just like you, you're the ones that have supplied the, the income, the increase to help us reach the harvest. So you're a part of this team. But we couldn't reach the harvest. We couldn't bring in the harvest. We couldn't teach and preach to the harvest without the finances. So you have to have the finances. The finances are, are necessary, required, and God agreed to provide provision for the vision. Provision. He supplies <laughs> the supply for the vision. But I want us to keep our focus on the harvest because I think there's not enough Christians that are thinking about the harvest. I think sometimes we get in a ditch on one side or the other of the road and we get tunnel vision and we start thinking about ourselves. And we think that God's revelation of sowing and reaping and seed time and harvest and all these spiritual laws are just for us to accumulate things. And it's much bigger than that. It is for the harvest of souls to teach people, to bring people out of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son, the kingdom of light. So keep that in mind. Abundant is super abundant in quantity, superior in quality, um, excessive, exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power or the love that works in you. Now, the word harvest, let's look at the word harvest, abundant harvest. Harvest means to reap the crop. It means to reap the harvest, the fruit of what you've sown. Go back to Genesis 1, 26 through 28, and God tells Adam and Eve that he is going to give them every seeding seed, everything that is necessary for them to take dominion over the earth. Everything's going to reproduce after its own kind. And he gave them the seeding seed. Now, we've already read Matthew 9, 35 through 38, and Luke 10, 1 and 2. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, and let's read verses 26, Mark 4, 26 through 32. Now, here's how the kingdom works. This is the revelation of the kingdom. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom, had compassion on uh, the people who were tired, ignorant, weary. He preached the gospel of the kingdom, the good news. And then he tells us throughout the gospels, and then Paul picks up in the epistles and tells us how the kingdom works the revelation of the kingdom. And he said, so is the kingdom of God, is if a man should cast seed into the ground. Now he's referring to the word in your heart, but he uses a physical agricultural analogy. Well, let me ask you a question. Who is sowing the seed? The man. The man sows the seed. God gave him the seed, but the man is responsible for sowing it. Uh, we're talking about abundant harvest. So the man sows the seed and he sleeps and rises night and day. The seed springs and grows up. He knoweth not how. For the earth brings forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he, who? The man, the same man that sowed the seed, puts in the sickle, because the harvest is come. The harvest is ready. But who's going to reap the harvest? You are. God causes it to grow. He said here, the man doesn't know. Well, we know it takes moisture and dirt and to grow a physical seed, a, a plant. But we know also in the spirit realm, we know that it takes watering because the Bible says that 
One sowed the seed of the word. One watered the seed, taught them, rehearsed it, discipled them. And then another one came along and harvested the seed. The people that have been taught, that have been fed. Somebody may have witnessed to you years ago. Somebody watered that seed. And then somebody comes along and harvests it, maybe in a gospel meeting over VTN. We had, we had testimony of one of the death row inmates several years ago that got saved watching VTN. He was later executed for his crime. He, he, he understood that he deserved it, but he didn't care. He had repented. He asked God into his heart. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. I communicated with him for several years, and he knew that when they executed him, he was going to go directly to heaven. He served his time on death row for his, his uh, uh, sins, murder, and he paid his debt to uh, civilization. But he got saved. He got born again through watching VTN. So he was uh, a harvest of the network, and he's in heaven today. <laughs> I told him, I said, you know, according to the laws of the, of the land, and they may be able to take your physical life, but they can't take your spirit. And I said, your spirit is going to go directly to God and, and I'll see you when we get to heaven. Isn't that amazing? Only God can do that. But here is how the kingdom works. The man sows the seed. God grows the harvest, but man puts in the sickle and he reaps the harvest because the harvest has come. Or he says, the harvest is ripe. Now, I hope you've been blessed by this. Now, tomorrow we're going to continue uh, with this teaching, the abundant harvest. And I, I pray that you will get a different perspective and an understanding about what God wants to do. Now, I'm going to really place an emphasis on our responsibility, the church's responsibility. So get ready. You, you might want to fasten your seatbelt the next day or two uh, because the responsibility for all of this is on the church. Jesus told his disciples, you go and preach this gospel to the world. So join me for the next Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas. And wherever you're watching, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221, or email Happy Caldwell at VTNTV.com. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN, your Arkansas Christian connection. And follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell.